G'day everybody and welcome to another episode of Automotive Carnage. Today we are going to be working on a very rare, unique and very important vehicle for this particular manufacturer back in the 60s. This vehicle was under threat from another manufacturer and uh, so they decided to retaliate. And it is not this 1969 Valiant Pacer. It's something much bigger. Much. Much bigger. It's got a big booty. Anyway, I'll show you soon. Yes, g'day everyone, welcome to this episode of Automotive Carnage, my name's DJ and thank you so much for joining us out here in the wonderful Australian Outback yet again. And today we're doing what we love to do best and that is recover beautiful old cars. By beautiful I mean extremely rusty and no one ever wants them. But anyway, what we have here is a HG Holden Brahm. Now I've been practicing for the last two weeks on how to say that properly, right? It's Brahm, not Broham, Braham, Broom. I'm still going to get it wrong, but anyway we're going to call it a Brahm for today's purpose. Now, I know what you're all thinking. Why is he not working on that blooming pacer? As I have said, I would be doing for the last couple of months now. Well, the pacer is at a stage where it is ready to go off to the sandblasters. I just got a little bit more rust I want to take out of the floor. Um, and for a decent sandblaster, we're waiting at least four months. So until then, I thought, why not grab another project that we really do not need? Before we get into a walk around of this vehicle and we'll show you everything that's going on, a little bit of a story about where this came from. So I've been chasing this car for at least two and a half years of knowing about out in the desert, uh, way up on the Northern Territory border. A good friend of mine went out, collected it, and he just kind of teased me for the next two years, um, saying, do you want it? Do you don't want it? Do you want it? I want it. It, it, it was a long time. <laughs> anyway, anyway, he finally brought it down to my town. I offered him some cash and he was like, yep, sweet, let's do it. So finally, I have an HG Brahm, which... From my basic research, and feel free to correct me and like update me, as far as I'm aware, there's only 7,000 of these made over the HKTG model range, and they obviously were the ones before the Statesman came out. So, anyway, let's walk around this vehicle and um, see what it does have and what it doesn't have. Well, here we have it, folks, another rare and desirable car left sitting out in the desert. Um, I swear, I don't go looking for these. I actually prefer to find the more base models, the more generic cars that everyone actually remembers granddad or grandma actually driving. These Brahms, the RX3s, the RX2s, they're a bit more special and not as many people have a connection with them. But when they come up and they're available, man, you just, you gotta jump on it. So anyway, this one is not too bad. The body is pretty straight. We have all the glass except we are missing I think it's just this quarter window and the front windscreen is smashed up so we'll need a new one of those the roof has been caved in somehow not too sure but body wise it's looking pretty good she's got a little bit of rust in usual places down in quarters um, we are we have something going on here that we need to fix up as well but we think we know what it is so we'll get on to that Coming further towards the back, all the badging has been taken off this, unfortunately. Um, and it looks like it's actually been a bit of a fire there, um, judging by the way that that rear quarter has rusted out. But anyway, it doesn't concern us with what we have planned for this car. Now, all the tires are going to need pumping up. That's okay. We still have a lot of garnish um, on the back here, which looks absolutely awesome. Going to need some new lenses for the tail lights. What's in the boot? Is there anything in here? Yeah, you can see, that's where the brown logo was. No. It looks um, pretty tidy in here as well. What's like under these carpets? Oh, don't fall on me. Uh, let's see. No, that looks like a pretty solid floor under there. As I said, this was found up in the Northern Territory border, so a lot less salt lakes around there. Oh, you got a bit of rust down there. So the rust is much more, much more minimal. It's a lot more minimal than what we normally find. All right, let's go inside this old girl. Most of the doors do work. I don't think the drivers really opens up too well. And the first thing you'll notice, obviously, is the entire interior and all the seats has gone missing, which really is a blessing in disguise. Because there's been no carpet on the floor, the floor pans generally are in absolutely fantastic condition. The only rust I can find so far is back here in the rear driver's side. But um, besides that, look, we've still got the buckles in here. We're looking absolutely splendid. I mean, these things were lucky. Look, we've got the... Uh, Missing front headlight surrounds too, so that's fantastic. I didn't know they were in here. Door cards are there, but looking very tatty. Still got the steering wheel. Now, 
I'm sure all you Holden lovers will let me know, is that an actual brown steering wheel or is that being replaced with something else? If you could let us know. Oh look, we still have the cluster in here too. So we've got 40,000 original miles. She's only just running in, fellas. Anyway, looking absolutely awesome in here. Let's get out of here. Now, something that is also a bit more unusual is that, well, it's a bra with a homemade rhubarb on it, which is absolutely fantastic. That's going to stay. But generally when we find cars out here, the engines are gone. And if I could get into here, I would show you that it still has a 308 in it. Absolutely awesome. So we might have a crack at trying to get that started, um, which that's not going to work because I just remembered down here somewhere, uh, underneath the header, uh, there's a leg out of bed, so we've got a hole in the block. Uh, which is a bummer, because that would have been awesome to try to get the original motor running. Anyway, I think that's enough uh, dilly-dallying on the vehicle. Um, we have my mate Woody here, giving us a hand. We have our car trailer that doesn't have a winch, so we're going to have to hand winch this car up onto the trailer. Now before we do that, let's jack up this side and find out what's gone wrong in that front suspension now i have a feeling i know what it is but let's get that wheel off and uh, find out for sure well that didn't take long to run into our first complication that's um this just became a whole lot longer of an ordeal let me show you what I'm talking about. So we jump in here. Now I kind of knew that the tie rod end here for the steering was already disconnected. So the one part that I thought we needed was the nut. So I went out to an HK the other day and got a nut to fit on here. Now the problem is though, is that's completely useless if you don't have anywhere to bolt it into. So the actual arm that comes off here that the tie rod end goes into, as you can see, no longer exists. So that's a bummer. Now we could go back out to the HK where we got the nut from and get the arm, but that's quite a few kilometers in the other direction. Remember guys, we're out here in the scrub, so um, spare parts and super cheap are a bit hard to get to. So what we're gonna do is pump, this one, this hub spins pretty freely. And since we're only hand winching the car on anyway, we're hoping, fingers crossed, <laughs> famous last words, all that stuff, that once we put the wheel on here and uh, pump up some air, then it's gonna run nice and true, and it's just gonna go up onto the trailer. Famous last words, I know, but um, we currently have no power tools. We've only got hand tools on us. So no drills, no ugly so we can't make anything with the scrap around us. And looking around, there are other cars here, but uh, not the generation of Holden that we need. So yeah, wishful hoping is all we got at this point. So let's see how that gets us. Alrighty, roadblock number two. As you saw, we got some air into this tire. There was a little bit of uh, bread packaging stuck in here. We had to pull that out. Now that's holding a lot more air. So that's good, still got a slow leak, but we should be okay to get onto the trailer. Come put to do the back wheel, find out it's a brand new tire on here, but they've gouged the, uh, on the inside somewhere. So we have a slow leak coming from behind it there. So, oh, and then, then we jump over to the other side back wheel and the tire has been de-beaded, so our little air compressor, I don't think it's going to have the power to push that back on. Again, that's a brand new tire in there. Radio. So, plan, plan C now, I think. Yeah, something like that. Uh, we're just going to pump up the front tires and then use those to hand winch it on and just hopefully drag the rear on with it. This won't be an automotive car's rescue without a little bit of drama. So anyway, what we've got is we've got two tie downs and um, we're just going to anchor those to the front of the trailer there and they will be me on this side, uh, Woody on the other side, and just taking turns and winching it up. Because that's burnt out and completely dead, and I need to buy a new one. So if everyone feels like sponsoring all of cars, we do need a new winch at the moment, hit us up. Anyway, let's get this car onto a trailer.
Wow, that was uh, definitely an exercise and a half. My arms are absolutely worn out now, but uh, we, we got there. So we got the Brahm sitting up on the trail. We'll give it one more crank just to bring it forward a little bit more. But yeah, otherwise she is on safe and sound. Now, how's this for bloody irony, right? Just as we get it on, get the tray tilt, who should arrive? But my mate and his big, big 16 ton MAN recovery truck. <laughs> By knowing he was coming out here, that will save us an hour and a half. <laughs> like he's going, oh, anyway, so. <laughs> Bloody hell. So anyway, we got this on. Um, yeah, we'll strap it forward a little bit more. We'll tie her down and then take her home. But the other problem we have is we pulled the battery out of the Prado to use the uh, tire pump. Now, we're just about to see if it still has enough charge to start our car. What do you reckon? Uh, I reckon she'll go. You reckon she'll go? Yeah, it's still green. All right, it's still green, so okay. Let's, um, let's pick a key. Oh, it might be us on that recovery truck. Oh no, I can't take it again. Alright, no, clear? Yep. Oh. And you doubted the power of Toyota. Maybe I did. I don't know. Anyway, let's finish this off. Get it home. Well, there we have it, folks. We have got the Brahm back into our yard here. And now we've finally got here, we can slow down a little bit and just go over this vehicle and really see what is it that we actually have here. Now, as I say, it's a 1970 HG Brahm, um, and it's, it's relatively complete from the outside. This car was up on the Northern Territory border in a little abandoned community there. A good friend of mine found it, dragged it in, and um, he's been holding on to it ever since for the last two and a half years, as I said before. And um, I've been kind of just chipping away at him and going, come on, mate, we need to, we need to do something with this. It's a really cool car. Um, kind of wish I was there the day he went and rescued it. Um, but unfortunately our, our schedules didn't line up for that so here it is now um, and it's ours so let's go over it and really see is there anything about this vehicle that stands out uh, that's missing or that is uh, that, that's good about it pretty much so the both the good and the bad now, as I said before I believe that this rear quarter has been on the fire and we can see that's true by the way that the lenses here have mounted uh, we still have that beautiful brown garnish there but unfortunately it has been damaged when someone's tried to pick the lock for the trunk uh, the boot sorry uh, rear bar a bit dinged up and that but um, again where this car was found was so remote and so far out I'm actually surprised it's in as good a condition as it actually is so someone has come along and taken a lot of the trim pieces uh, left the ones around the doors there and they have two unfortunately taken two of the tags we're not able to get this thing registered easily uh, it can still be done but it's a lot more paperwork that has to be done and i'd say the same person who took all our trim down here have taken all of the badging for the brahm and the holding badges so yeah all the windows there except for our front windscreen which is smashed up in the corner there uh, bonnet is absolutely beautiful and what I thought was a homemade bull bar actually isn't. It has been made by a company here, made by FG Nevi and Co. Kalgoorlie. Um, so, be interesting to look up that company and see when they operate or if they even still exist. All right, under the hood here. Sorry, the boot. Oh, I'm talking all American lingo. So I've been watching a lot of uh, American reality TV car shows lately, so I've been uh, mixing up all my lingo. Anyway, you get what I'm on about. We have the Holden 308, and uh, this too has been cannibalized for a lot of parts, but what we do have, this thing had a power steering, it's had air con, um, there's a lot of goodies in this vehicle, and as I said before, it does have a hole in the block, but upon further inspection, oh, I can't really show you guys, it's not actually a hole in the block, it's a hole in the sump, so, I don't know, do we pull this out and give it a good looking over, I've tried to rotate it, it is seized up, so regardless, it will need to be stripped down to find out why that hole's in the sump. They obviously don't do that by themselves. There's a reason for it. We just gotta find out what that reasoning is. So yeah, we do have a 308, whether it's in good condition or rebuildable condition or not, we won't know until we pull it out. Question is, do we take the time to pull it out or not? Now, when we were pulling apart all this, trying to fix the back of it, we did notice that it had Gerlock uh, disc brakes on the front there, which is a awesome option for this era of a vehicle. Uh, what sort of diff we have, I don't know if it's an LSD or not yet. Um, yeah, so there are some really cool little features on this vehicle. Ah, now obviously the interior, let's go have a look inside there. 
is say we've got no carpets, we've got no seats or anything like that. Uh, our spare wheels for our trailer and our ramps are in here at the moment, but the interior wise is really solid. It's really good in here. And I love that we've still got a dash and uh, what I'm hoping is a Brahm steering wheel as well. So yeah, nice solid floors that we can build with. Just a few patches over there on the passenger side rear well that need to be patched up. So looking good so far. Now the next question would be, what do we do with this vehicle? Do we keep it in the fleet? Do we modify it? Or do we restore it? Or do we just sell it on and use those funds to go towards the Pacer and some of the other builds that we have going on? Me personally, when I look at this car, it does talk to me. And what it says is it wants to be what I'm going to call a JFK spec. I love Lincoln Continentals. And I love their suicide doors on the rear. And uh, with today's prices, there's absolutely no way that I'm going to be able to afford the Lincoln Continental. So I'm thinking, why don't we take our luxury Holden and turn it into the best Lincoln Continental we can. So let's put suicide doors in the rear. Let's put an LS1 and 4L60 under the bonnet. And uh, let's put some nice 20s or something on there. Air ride suspension, get it really slow, slamming on the ground. And um, just do the typical kind of modifications that you would do to a Lincoln Continental. So I really like that idea. Um, but again, tell me what you guys reckon. Do we keep it around for a while? We do a few other things going on, so we have to kind of slot it in there. Or do we sell it on, move on to the next person to look after it, restore it properly, and um, take the funds and use that on the pacer? I don't know. You guys, if you got any other ideas too, let me know. Otherwise, I think that might be all for this episode of Automotive Carnage. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next one. See you later.